you're worthy or you deserve it, but because my son is worthy yeah. and because he paid the price for you, and I'm going to bless you and do all the things that I promised because I'm not a man that I should lie. Yeah. And as we go into the book of Joshua, the fifth chapter, the children of God are moving that much closer from the place of their purpose to amen, the ultimate goal of their destiny, which was the land that flowed with milk and honey. But their mindset still wasn't quite where it was supposed to be. So God put some, some things in place to test them and to let them know that first in chapter nine, in verse 9, before he said we do anything else, let me confirm in your spirit. And the same word that God released over Joshua and the children of Israel, I release over the body of Christ on today. Because you cannot have victorious thinking until you receive verse 9 by faith. And the Bible says, and the Lord says, someone say, the Lord said. The Lord said. See, when you start with that and you're speaking to me and you're prophesying over my life and you're giving me a word in season, and then I'm going to receive that by faith when I know that the Lord said and what yeah. the Lord said, according to his scriptures, it surely shall come to pass. And the Lord said, someone say it again. And the Lord amen. Said. And unto Joshua. Amen. This day, before we even go on, amen, just look at your neighbor right now. Look at just one person, amen, behind you, next to you, and say, and the Lord said, and prophesy to that person. Call that person's name. Substitute that person in the place of Joshua. And the Lord said, unto, and then call that person's name. Come on, come on. That was we. That was we and water down. We're not going. No, we're not going 2011 and, and, and we and water and pansy sex. I just said last night when I spoke to the brother here. Don't give me no soft word. Don't give me no word of doubt. Don't give me a word of unbelief. If you're going to speak a word in my spirit and you're going to encourage me, you better speak that word with steadfastness. You better speak that word with power and boldness and confidence that this is thus saith the Lord, a word unto you in this season for your weary soul. So let's try that one more time. And the Lord said, and the Lord said unto, unto prophesy to that person. Better, 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 little better, we'll go on. And the Lord said, this day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Some of you need to know that and God has rolled away the reproach of yesterday. That God has rolled away the things that we suffered, the things that we endured, the things that we stumbled and tripped upon, the things that, meant that caused us condemnation in our mind because we received the word that there's no condemnation and to them that are in Christ Jesus. But God said that before you can think victoriously, you need to receive by faith that I have rolled away the things from last year, two years ago, three years ago, and it is no more. It is thrown into the sea of forgiveness. And we need to think victoriously that no matter what I did, no matter even what used to hold me down, no matter what had me entangled in bondage for far too long, God spoke unto Joshua and said that, amen, you better think victoriously, boy. I have rolled away the reproach from your sad times in Egypt. Amen. When you were a slave in bondage, when you were in captivity to the enemy, I have rolled away the reproach. Amen. That, that word just rolls, amen, down my spirit. That word encourages me that, amen, uh, 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 oh my goodness, God has rolled away, Brother Tyrell, everything, man of God, that held you back and hindered you. God has said in 2011, if you walk in and receive it by faith, that he has rolled away the reproach from your Egypt. Wherefore, the name of the place is called Gilgal unto this day. Now he's saying that, amen, we're forgiven, we're redeemed, and the first point of the victorious mindset is that you belong. Someone needs to say, I belong here. I belong. Amen. I belong in this place. Amen. Brother Keith, that God, you belong in a place. Amen. That God has promised and, and promoted and prompted you to. God says, don't get in that place and be like, well, I really don't belong here with the big dogs. Amen. I, I don't, I don't, I don't suppose to be here. Amen. I don't, I'm not worthy of these blessings and of this honor. I'm not worthy of this favor. God is telling us all today that we have to think like we. Yeah. Belong. 
Amen. Let's continue on in verse 10. The Bible said, And the children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month, and even in the plains of Jericho. Continue on in verse 11. And they did eat of the old corn of the land on the morrow after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched corn in the self same day. Amen. Verse 12. And the manna ceased on the morrow after they had eaten of the old corn of the land. Neither had the children of Israel manna anymore. But they did eat of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. This people of God, amen, is where in the transition of victorious thinking as a body, as the body of Christ, as this branch of Zion, we miss the mark. When God transitions from faith to faith, yeah. when God progresses from glory to favor, come on somebody. Yeah, right. See, when, when man used to fall, when, when we used to, to obtain things a certain way, we're accustomed to going about it in a certain form, and then there's a paradigm shift in glory. Yeah. God said it's no longer falling, baby, from up above. It is now in your reach and in your possession. See, they were accustomed to have things given to them that God just opened up and just dropped certain things on them. And then they would pray and believe and lean on someone else's faith and the manna would fall. The quails would fall. Moses would strike the rock. And water would gush and come from it. And what, what have you been receiving that we were accustomed going through on a day by day, on a daily basis where God is saying, you're still looking up. But it says now, look, it says that they are eating the old corn of the land. In other words, that what was given before, now it is time for seed time and harvest. It's time for the principle now of seed time and harvest. See, God said, I carried you for some time. That things came a certain way that you were accustomed to in our traditional mindset. That, God, I do this. And you do that. Yeah. But to move to a level of victorious, yeah. to, to move to a level of prosperous thinking, yeah. God said there has to be a shift that we have. Uh, what did Paul say? When I was a child, I spake as a child. Yeah. I fought as a child. Yeah. But when I became a man, he said what? I put away childish things. Yeah. So it's time for us to stop waiting and for God, God do this and God bring this. But God said now you may have to apply your faith to hard work. Now, amen, prayer is now going to have to move on to deeper preparation. Yeah, we prayed and, and then we got ourselves together, we got situated, but that doesn't play, take the place of heartfelt preparation. Amen. Our faith does not substitute hard work. Yeah, God, I'm believing God and I'm praying and, and I'm hoping and I'm expecting God to do whatever, but God said in victorious thinking, we didn't go from faith to working a little bit harder in the kingdom. Amen. That we need to go from on our knees and praying and it's continue to pray, but we're, we're praying, we're seeking God's face to now. What are we looking up for in preparation? Are we, are we expecting this great move of God? Are we expecting God to come and move in a different way? I don't know about you, but I have no intentions on doing the same thing that we did in 2000. But well, what are you saying, preacher? That we, we, we've been doing a lot of preparing. We've been doing and believing God for a lot of things individually and as a body. But God is saying it has to get to a point in this year, amen, by, as a body and collectively, that our faith is now moving to um, hard work. Yeah. Amen. Hard work in the things of the spirit. Amen. Hard work in going out and, 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 and ministering and laying hands and oh, yeah. being about kingdom work and yeah. being about saving souls and yeah. working harder to bring our families together. Yeah. We may sit back and say, I want a closer relationship yeah. with this person. Yeah. And I, I desire a closer relationship with that person. And, and I want certain things. And then while I'm still working, and then for Caesar, and I want yeah. this and I want that. And I'm believing God for it, but a victorious mindset, you begin to set out on faith. Yeah. It's one thing to have faith, but in this year we have to set out on faith yeah. that our faith has now transitioned to harder work for the things of God. That amen, our prayer has now, our preparation and our prayer has now come together as one that we are that much closer yeah. to walking in a place of victory and prosperity. Yeah. But my God, amen, if we sit back and continue to seek God, amen, 
the trust in prayer. And we simply just believe God just by faith that we're still having the mindset of 2010. But are you ready as a body to move from, amen, from our faith to now working hard in the kingdom and from our prayer to deeper preparation to move to the place and the things that God has promised. But God is saying, amen, as we go on, as we look, and as a transition has happened, amen, will your increase, let me ask you this, amen, the, your, will your provision still come from the same expectation that it had in 2010? See, I'm about to say something that's going to cause people, I hope you to shake their head and say, amen, things just can't be that way. Amen, as hard as you work, and I work for whatever it's been in 2010, and I, I mean, all that I just said, I'm summing up in this. Are you still expecting your provision to come from the same way it did in 2010? I don't. I don't anticipate it. It, it, it. Let me say it like this. Let me put it thousands of cents so we can understand. Whether it's the youth or young adults, whether it's the adults ourselves, whatever it may be, whatever your monthly allotment was, whatever you have done to bring in X from the 1st to the 31st, is that your same expectation for 2010? Or now that we're 2011. <laughs> so I wish I had someone here that knew where I was coming from. And do we still intend to go from check to check? Do we still intend, amen, to, 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 to give our offering and our tithes, amen, and you pay a couple bills, and then we got the pity pinch until we get paid again for the young adults, amen, wherever your money came from, from student loans, from reimbursement, from, from pastor or moms or dads, or whoever to give you a couple dollars here and there, and then you go to a movie or two, or maybe buy some, I know Sister Darius, some pencils and some things like that to work on her little artistic ability, and, and then someone to go to the ATL and some want to go to New York on trips and some of us want to go to visit this church and that church and by the time we get through doing what we're doing we can go in our pockets close to that next reimbursement of the check coming in wherever it comes from or the next blessing you receive and things are tight Victoria's thinking Victoria's thinking are we going to go about things the same way and expect a different result Victorious thinking. Amen. And this is what God was telling Joshua that, amen, I used to provide this way when you was, amen, coming out of Egypt and wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, but now you're in the land of that flow of milk and honey in your destiny, in your promised land, and some of the saints were still doing what we were probably going to do and coming from 2010, they're still looking up and looking to see if God's going to move the same way. Where, 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 where's the manna? We're, we're in the promised land. We're walking in the area of our blessing. We have moved now to another level, but I'm still dealing with the same ailments. I'm still troubled by the same things. And then the first year started out, and I'm, I'm, I, I paid this, I got this, I went here, I went there, and I'm dealing with the same struggle, the same provision, the same lack. I have the same need, and not doing anything to change it. So some of us are finding our way like this. We're in 2011, the first day of 2011, and we're still waiting for the man to fall. Our, our head is still up that way, and we're saying, God, I still have faith, God. I, I, I'm still praying, but God is saying, are oh, you going to take that leap of faith from faith to begin to now? Make me look to see my God. What I need is within my reach. Amen. What I need, the gifts, the talents, the anointing, and lies within to get what I need. Amen. That my God, whatever I need, uh, if I just got a, a plant of seed, I'll reap a harvest. Come if on. I step to it, man, my area and speak to my area of light, if I speak to my area of deficiency yeah. and begin to speak with faith and begin to speak with power and call things that be not as though they were and begin to speak to the areas that amen, have been my lack and command them areas, those same areas to become my increase God said if you just do the things that I'm calling you to do and stop looking up, it was okay for a season just to stand still and look to the hills for what's coming thy help but God said that by now it's time that we begin to stand on the hills because God said that I am the God that owns the cattle of a thousand hills. See, I'm getting ahead of myself in this message, but I mean, it was okay, God, to, to say, I see that the richness is over there. I see that the power of God is 
over there. So I mean, I can look to the hills for what's coming my help. But now, God, I want to stand alongside you on top of the hill, God. I want to reap, amen, in this season, God, where I've sowed. I want to stand, oh my God, someone ain't going there with me. Someone is still content, amen, just looking to those hills and seeing that the things that God sends for you, although it's for